Hello, everyone. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday, March, or March, April 11th. I'm still in March, even though it's in April. Uh, our topic today is the DEN virtual field trips and free resources. Uh, Kyle's our special guest today. And I'm actually going to turn the mic over to Peggy. I'm going to welcome Peggy as well. She's one of your show hosts. I'm Lori Moffitt. Cami Moore is also a show host who's usually here doing closed captioning. So we thank Cami for doing closed captioning. Uh, but I'll turn the mic over to Peggy so she can introduce Kyle. Well, hello, everyone. It is so great to have all of you with us. As you know, we have an amazing group of educators on our Classroom 2.0 Live advisory team. And we meet regularly to brainstorm ideas for topics and presenters for our shows. And they have always provided us with excellent recommendations. Well, today's presenter was recommended by Paula Nagel, who really wanted to be here today to introduce Kyle. But unfortunately, she's very sick today. So our thoughts and prayers are with Paula for a speedy recovery. But we are thrilled to have Kyle Shett here with us today to share his passion, and I mean passion, for some amazing free resources from the Discovery Educator Network, including, but not limited to, virtual field trips for you and your students. Kyle began his career as a classroom teacher. In that experience, he discovered the unquestionable power, as so many of us have, of collaboration and communication to support a community of learners in his classroom, school, and district. After a short time as a smart technology certified trainer and education consultant, Kyle joined Discovery Education in 2010 to support one of the largest professional learning communities in the world, the Discovery Educator Network. Uh, many of you know it as the DEN. Over the past five years, Kyle has created in-person and web-based professional learning experiences for educators around the world. You'll often see Kyle in front of a camera hosting the Discovery Education virtual field trips. Through this work, he has brought students on exclusive experiences that many won't be able to have anywhere else to learn about the people and careers inside companies like the Weather Channel, Google, and the New York Stock Exchange to remote areas like the Lowell Observatory, the Ding Darling National Wildlife Refu Refuge, and even Churchill, Manitoba, the polar bear capital of the world. So I want to give a big, warm Classroom 2.0 Live welcome to Kyle and ask him to answer our newbie question and take over for us. So Kyle, tell us, what is the Discovery Educator Network? Well, good morning, and thank you so much. I appreciate that very nice introduction, but also uh, I'm just so so happy to join with all of you today. And and in fact, uh, Lori, Peggy, Paula, uh, so many so many folks that go and support these events. So thank you for hosting me. And and really, the answer: What is the Discovery Educator Network? It's our community of learners. It's educators like yourselves that are willing to join on a Saturday in your free time to connect with one another and share their most valuable resource, which we believe is each other. So really, really just kind of connecting with each other and sharing tools for using digital media and technology in the classroom. So with that, I really enjoyed looking at the poll and, and seeing a little bit more about you. And, and everyone here, in fact, I saw a number of folks that said, no, I don't use Discovery Education when, I, when uh, we got this started. But I have to say, I hope that by the end, you will find something that is worth your while and that you can say, yes, I do use Discovery Education in some capacity, because there really is a whole lot of uh, great resources for you. And that's what I'd like to share with each of you today. So 
quick little welcome. There it is. I was looking for that slide. If you have any questions, uh, of course, I've seen a number of you on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me at KT Shot. Send me an email. Happy to, happy to help out as well. Uh, but really, that's what we're talking about. Virtual field trips today and really a whole bunch of free resources. So I'm going to thank you in advance because I know there is a number of you that have already been chatting from Sanja to Carolyn, Patty, uh, Roxanne, so many educators that I've, I've seen and interacted with before. But I'm so excited about all of you that I've not been able to meet before and that I'm able to present to. Uh, so please do con continue to use that chat window if you have any questions. And I know that we'll get to those at the end of the experience here today. So briefly, I, I think Peggy did such a nice job there of, of an introduction. We won't spend too much time. But I overall, my role, what I do at Discovery Education is I support folks just like yourself. I support our Discovery Education community. And this is an image here uh, taken at our Summer Institute, one of the events that I support every year, which is an in-person learning experience that happens for uh, pretty much a full week in the summer. Um, but, but just so that you have a little bit more about me, I am. Uh, happy father of two little boys, my wife and I. We do live in central Pennsylvania as well, so uh, excited to, to connect with some central uh, from other Pennsylvanians and so forth. Um, in addition to that, already mentioned, I did float around a little bit between elementary and middle school, but spent most of my time in the elementary classroom. There's one of my kind of favorite pictures of, of my classroom quite a few, few years ago. And then, um, well, at Discovery, I've been able to do a lot of fun things, from leading our STEM Institute, uh, our senior STEM Institute, that's a, a picture of us in front of the White House, where we brought 50 educators together for a week-long learning experience about STEM education and how you can make it meaningful in your school, to, again, as I mentioned, uh, the Summer Institute in those weeks, but also virtual field trips. And here's a picture of me when we were at the Weather Channel uh, December a year ago. So. That's what we're going to talk about. We're going to share a few of these things with you as we jump right through here. And I know that we're probably going to have uh, way too many slides to, <laughs> to be able to get to them all. But let's just start here, because I think a video is just, uh, it shares so much better than just me talking about it. Let's start so that you can know what the Discovery Education community is. Let's start with a quick video. And I know this might uh, lag for you just a second, so I'll be quiet. I'll mute and uh, give you a few seconds for it to finish. Discovery Education is about more than just great products. It's about connecting educators to their most valuable resource, each other. You are part of a global community passionate about using digital media, sharing resources, or resources, collaborating, and networking to improve teaching and learning. We asked members of the community to share with us their favorite things about Discovery Education. Here are just a few of the things they had to say. I love Discovery Education and the community it provides. And if I don't know how to do something or I want to try something, I know exactly where to go to figure out how to do it. So it's like best practice in your classroom. I love the community calendar. I love the SOS strategies. I love being part of the blog team. I have the strength knowing the entire community also shares my love of education and gives me the voice, knowledge, and power to be innovative. The Discovery Education community helps make me a better teacher. It's scary at times knowing that there's only one superintendent in the school system, but at the same time, I know there are other superintendents all across the country who are doing this work right along with me. If I need an answer or have a question about anything, then seconds have responses from teachers around the world. Even right across the world, other children are finding out the same things and exploring the same ideas. I never feel alone in my classroom. Being surrounded by supportive and innovative teachers has undeniably helped transform my teaching practice. It has directly impacted my classroom, my teaching, and my students' lives. Thank you, Discovery Education. Thanks, Discovery, for helping us improve teaching and learning for the benefit of students everywhere. Your Discovery Education community is dynamic, supportive, and engaging. And it's getting stronger every day thanks to the enthusiasm of its members. Welcome. 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 Welcome, Welcome to your Discovery Education community. Welcome. Okay, so hopefully that gave you a little taste. And of course, rather than just sharing, I, I always like to create some somewhat of an interactive experience uh, to, to bring us together as well. So 
with the idea of a connected community, because in reality, that's what we are here today, right? Uh, joining from all around the world just for this, uh, this one session to continue learning together. Uh, we are our own little professional learning community. So this is my task for our little community here. If you're on a computer or an iPad, or even if you have a piece of paper nearby, go ahead into a notepad or Evernote or whatever you use to, to jot down notes. And just to yourself, I'm going to give you maybe 20 seconds. Write down who you think these four people are. Don't type it in the chat window yet. Just write it down on your own, okay? No, no sharing just yet. Write down who you think these people are. I'm going to just, just maybe 10, 15 seconds. So you're writing down, who do you think these four people were? Okay, you think you have them? All right, now, as a, as a community of learners here, and if you're on a computer, I, I didn't say you couldn't do a little bit of research. That's fine. If you wanted to do research and you're trying to find them on the web, I'm not going to blame you. <laughs> but as a community, let's go ahead and see if we can determine who these folks are. So um, let's start with the upper left. Anybody have any ideas who we think that might be? Go ahead and type those into the chat window. Take a guess, upper left. <laughs> no idea. That's okay, Glenn. <laughs> All right. Maybe we had an idea on the upper right. Anybody with any guesses on the upper right? All right. It was a good guess. Perhaps Tesla, Edison. Okay. Any other guesses? Well, we've got a couple Edisons. Yeah, using the, the picture, using those context clues. Okay. And a few Edison's. Okay, lower left. Who do you think that might be? Okay. Lots of guesses there. What about lower right? Hmm. Really good guesses. Okay. So, who do you think they are? Here comes the first one, upper right-hand corner. You all guessed it. Yes, it was Edison. Nice work. Nice work. Good job. All right. I think the next, probably next easiest one to me would have been this one. Yes, lower left-hand corner was Walt or Walter Disney. Absolutely. And I think those two, the, the context clues really helped Right, using those pictures, kind of using what you could know. Absolutely. Hmm. So here goes the other two. Lower right, that was Franklin Lloyd Wright. And I bet if we put him or found an image of him in front of some of the buildings he designed, maybe those clues could have helped you. But you had some, some good guesses there, Franklin Lloyd Wright. And the toughest one, in my opinion, even if you had used Google, you probably would not have found it. Reginald Fessender, he was an inventor and a physicist and came up with many devices and the depth finder is the one he's most known for. Now, why did we do this? Well, one, I love seeing that as a community we can work together to solve who they were. And in fact, if we had more time, how I often do this activity, is to space it out a little and have you go out to the web and do a quick research and see if you can find, oh, I think this person is this and this person is this. And when you do it that way and you structure this activity in that type of a learning environment, most times the entire group can get three out of the four. But the fourth one, the upper left Reginald Fessender, often is not, uh, you, you can't find him because he's not just Googleable as far as this image. You can't use Google image search. Uh, that's an image I took from Discovery Streaming. So it kind of just, you know, mixes up the field a little bit, makes it a little bit more challenging. But this exact idea, this whole sharing premise and connecting us all is exactly what we, we uh, the Discovery Education community and your community, 
that why we're here, showing the power of collaboration, the power of working together to solve problems, no matter what those problems are. And so that's what I wanted to start with. When we're talking about discovery education, free resources, and free programs, we're going to get through some of them today. There's no way. We could spend three hours and I could still be talking about all of them. It will be up to you to take a little bit back and to learn a little bit more, and hopefully you'll find a few that are helpful for you. But the one thing I do know is that if you continue to connect with educators like yourself and with other educators uh, that can, and you can work together, you'll find the gems. You'll find exactly what you're looking for. And as we do that, we should always be doing it surrounding best practices. And that's our Spotlight on Strategy series, which are completely free to everyone by going to our blog, blog.discoveryeducation.com. Uh, and searching for the strategies. Now there also, if you are a Discovery Education user, you can search for those inside of product as well. Type in your keyword at the top, Spotlight on Strategies, and you will find them. Because that activity we just did is a rendition of the four to one activity. Now here's a quick screenshot of what it would look like inside of product if you do have Discovery Education. But as I said, does it matter whether you do or not? because the Spotlight on Strategies series is completely free. If you go to blog at discoveryeducation.com, you'll see right there in the center, as well as at the top, there are two different areas to highlight the Spotlight on Strategies. In fact, we just finished our own edition of March Madness where we had the strategies competing upon, uh, amongst one another. So go ahead and, and see if you can find out who the winner is or was. Uh, so that, that's what we're talking about here is how can we take these resources and really apply them in a meaningful way? Everything that we share today, what is a great way to think about uh, not just having free tools, because everybody loves free tools, but what are free tools that we're sharing that can also be meaningful for teachers just like you? Now, the perfect thing, yes, Carolyn, I noticed you mentioned that the blog was available without a subscription. Absolutely, blog.discoveryeducation.com, and that's where we're sharing things all the time. And here's an example. When you click on that SOS page, there's the, uh, the archives for all of these Spotlight on Strategies, so you can get to those. So thinking about Spotlight on Strategies, why would I start there when we're talking about free resources? Because really, all of these programs, everything that I'm going to share with you today, they're really all about supporting information literacy. And the Spotlight on Strategies is a great way for us to, to do just that. Thinking about that activity that we just did with guessing who the, uh, the people in the pictures were. It's all about how, what kind of information do we need? And more importantly, how can we then critically and ethically apply the information? How can we create things? And how can we also identify and locate the appropriate sources of information to help us support our research and to help us professionally? And even more so, how can we effectively use information and resources no matter what the format is? Because yes, those images, those were information. They displayed some sort of content for us. So everything that we do today, I really would like to kind of wrap around that, that strategy for information literacy and how we can make these resources meaningful for you in your classroom. So. What's the place to start? The place to start would be going to discoveryeducation.com. And the reason that you're going to go there, even if you don't have a user account, is because Discovery partners with many like-minded organizations. Organizations like, we mentioned the Weather Channel or Google, but also Toyota Team Driver and, uh, and, and other companies that really are saying, hey, we want to make an impact in education in some capacity. And we want to join forces with Discovery because we know you have the means to do so, as well as the network and the community of educators to be able to share what we create together with. So things like the 3M Young Scientist Challenge were exactly uh, the, the creation and the results of that kind of planning. So if you go to discoveryeducation.com, and that's where I'm pulling all of these resources from today, I'll show you how to get, get here live in just a few seconds. You'll click on the teacher's resource. You can see my arrow there highlighting teachers. Again, you do not need a subscription. This is before you log in. In fact, I often joke in, in this conference, uh, in this presentation when I give it at conferences, that I tell you folks to slow down, not to log in quite yet because of all of the resources that are available. 
And what kind of resources are you going to find? Well, you're going to find videos and media. You're going to find interactive virtual labs. You're going to find uh, curriculum, lesson plans. You're going to find reading passages. There's all kinds of great stuff that we're going to share here. And I really divide it into three categories. Content, curriculum, contests, and challenges. Content, curriculum, and content, uh, contest challenges. All right, so to start, I thought we'd give a, a little example uh, of one that really kind of hosts those first two, and that's our STEM camp, discoveryeducation.com slash STEM. And what will you see? I'll give you a preview, and then we'll go out to, to the web to see this. Um, when you go to discoveryeducation.com slash STEM, you're going to find standards-aligned STEM curriculum for three weeks around water, urban infrastructure, and energy. So three different units that are really meant for fifth through eighth grades and can walk you through how to create some sort of a STEM camp, perhaps this summer even, if you're looking to do so. And the way we do that is by pulling in all of these three resources, so hands-on activities, engineering challenges, um, reflections using a STEM notebook, digital project extensions, and more. So let's go ahead out to the web, and, and ideally this is going to work for you uh, and work for me. Just bear with me one second, please. We'll show you how to find all of this great stuff. Okay, you should be following along with me now, and you should see my screen. Looks like everybody is. All right, so again, discoveryeducation.com. The first thing I shared with you was to go to the teacher section. When you do that, a menu appears. I often just drag down to the featured programs area. That seems to work well. And this is, these are many of the resources we're going to highlight in this featured programs area. But right now we're talking about STEM, and I'll also, also show you how to get there. If you just go discoveryeducation.com slash STEM, these are all the different ways that discovery works uh, around and, and, and supports the STEM initiatives in classrooms all around the country. We mentioned our STEM institutes. If you scroll down, STEM leader course, STEM formation, lots of different things that, that we're doing. But STEM camp here on the right, this is the one that we want to learn more about, so we'll click on learn more. And as I scroll down, you can watch a little, uh, little segment about it. Scroll down a little bit more, and you can see here are those units, water, urban infrastructure, and energy. Let's go ahead and click on water. We'll select learn more, and this might have you stumped. You might say, wait a minute, I don't have a username or password. Well, I do, but even if you don't, this is completely free, okay? Right here, it's free, and it's easy, and it allows you to access all of these things. So. Register, create an account if you don't have one. If you do have one, go ahead and log in with your account. And the reason that you would like to do this is because as you scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, scroll down, now you start to see the curriculum that I was just talking about. Again, completely free for you, day one all the way through day five. Each day gives you an overview of what's included, including the vocabulary terms. Vocabulary terms, by the way, Let's open that in a new tab just to give an example. The vocabulary terms are visual, not just uh, text-based, but we have uh, animations and videos to go with them. We also have PowerPoint presentations to go with each of these days. You can see the schedule of what's suggested for each of the days of STEM camp. So 30-minute opening activity, how to set the stage, the video that goes with that, and now they're setting the stage, a video that goes without, then an activity, how sweet it is. Let's open up this activity, take a peek at that, and see what it is. Some cyber investigations, you can see lunch. So it's mapped out for you entirely. And if you don't want to do STEM camp, we actually have a version of this called STEM Club, which is after school, and this tab over here on the right. Now we opened a resource, I just wanted to open that, because this is a PDF, fully printable, concept skills, preparation, the tasks, what we're asking the students to do, all right there just for you to be able to use. So again, STEM Club, if you're looking to start a camp, 
one through five days of full curriculum just around water, then another full week around urban infrastructure and another around energy. And if you prefer an after school format, click on after school and it will provide the same content in a different pathway. Pretty cool uh, way to get started and I hope that, uh, that that works and is helpful for you guys. All right, so that was STEM camp. Let's just kind of keep plugging along because otherwise we'll, whew, we'll never get through all this stuff because there's so much to share, but that's okay. Uh, we talked content and curriculum in that example there. Well, if you go to the blogs, I mentioned the blogs earlier, blog.discoveryeducation.com, you'll also see that we have a number of posts uh, and another number of resources all around contests and challenges, ways that you can win for your school ways that you can win for you, and ways that your students can win, win for themselves, scholarships and things like that. In fact, I posted a blog back in February that lined up all of the ways you could win through the month of February, the month of March, and the month of April. And if you're interested, if you're at the blog, you can search 10 ways in the little search bar that's at the top of your window. There's a search bar right there. That works. There we go. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so, uh, and so, there's a number of resources that do that. So, what I wanted to do here is just kind of take you through a few of these resources because often there's more than just a a way to win money. There's also content and things that go with them, including virtual field trips. So, let's get started with one of our first ones: Intel Security program. This is called Think Before You Link. It's a fairly new program for Discovery. We launched this with Intel Security back in the fall. And really, this is all about helping parents and kids make smart decisions online. So if you're looking at digital citizenship programs and, and really uh, internet safety programs for your school, this is a great place to get started because, again, completely free, happy for you guys to use all of, these co all of this content. Uh, and, and to share it with your schools and your educators. Now, we mentioned there's often ways to win. So March 13th was the deadline for the Think Before You Link sweepstakes. You missed it, but don't worry. There'll be another time, another chance for you next year to join in again. We we're giving away up to $10,000 grants, ways to, uh, to bring in uh, equipment and things into your classroom to support your digital infrastructure. And the other thing that this program offers, before we jump out to the site, this is what we're going to get to, is self-paced student modules. So ways that your students can go through and interact and learn about digital safety and digital citizenship. So let's go ahead out to the web and hopefully this will work for you. And we'll show, show this off for you. Here we go. Let's start sharing. And we're back to my browser. So you, you remember we were just at STEM camp. We can close that. We were already there. Back at featured programs. And if you want to, how do we get to featured programs? DiscoveryEducation.com. Up at the top, teachers, featured programs. We'll scroll down. This is just one of the ways we can sort through the different programs. So let's go ahead all over here, you can just kind of scroll through these different tabs, get an idea of what's here, like your charts, health, environment, okay? So this is one way that you can do it. The other way is you can just type in the, uh, the, the partnerships that I'm saying, like think before you link. Now we already mentioned this, so we'll open this one in a new tab, but this is what we were chatting about. And you'll notice it takes you to a full separate website. I'm going to click on students, since we were sharing specifically the student self-paced modules. And you can see that there are three of them, cyber safety, cyber security, and cyber ethics. Let's load this curriculum module, and it might take just a second, but we would love to know who you are, where you're from, what module you're looking to use. Quick. Now, I don't think you're hearing that, but it is talking to me right now because this is a self-paced module that goes ahead and it shares with me ideas about how to start, what to think about when I'm interacting with people online, how should I uh, safely interact with folks in Messenger. I'm just going to click through a number of these. 
you get the idea here as I'm scrolling through. What would you do if this happened? What would you do if that happened? And many of these ask you to click and to learn more. So self-paced, and when you finish, when you get all the way to the end of it, it provides a module, for, uh, I'm sorry, a module, it provides a certificate for your completion of this module. So right now I was prompted to read the messages and drag them to the stranger or the friend picture. So what do we think? Stranger, friend, let's try it. I got it right, all right. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to go ahead and close it. That was Think Before You Link. That was one of our first uh, first programs that we wanted to share. And I'm browsing through that chat window. Please continue to, to ask questions. I will definitely make sure that we have time to get back to those at the end here. All right. More programs, more free resources. So we've covered what? We've covered uh, Spotlight on Strategies, completely free for you. A list, a whole slew of programs and, and resources that have contests and challenges, ways for you to win money. But of course, part of this presentation is about virtual field trips. So many of our virtual field trips are brought to you by companies that want to bring you on an experience and they want to bring their students on an experience uh, so that you can meet the people behind the careers, behind the companies that, that uh, that really help to get the work done. And so this is one of my favorite parts, one of these favorite things that I love to do, and that is really creating these virtual field trip experiences. And one of them was around this Recipe for Innovation program. So Recipe for Innovation is a partnership with Chibani. It's really a K-12 program, uh, and it's really talking about anything from getting started and kind of thinking about innovation all the way through to high school entrepreneurship and so forth. So Let's go ahead, what we're going to do, we're going to jump out to the web, and when we do that, I want to show you um, where to find the virtual field trips, and then I'm also going to show you how to find the, this, um, this another self-paced little module, little student activity that your students can participate with us. So bear with me, here we go, we'll share my screen again. All right, so we were at Think Before You Link. Scroll into the top, scroll into the top. But remember, there's a few over here, and we're on health right now. We're going to go ahead, and, and by the way, guys, these are generic buckets because health, it could be under the innovation bucket. This could really be under the STEM bucket. There's so many different ways to, to really kind of put these together. But recipeforinnovation.com is the website. Depending on what grade level you want to look at, K5, 6, 8, 9, 12, you can go to that area. We haven't talked too much about elementary resources, so let's go ahead and, and go to that area of the site. You can see that there are lesson plans, PDFs, and PowerPoints to go with different uh, activities that you can do with your classes. And there are also the interactives like this one, so let's go ahead and take a look at that. So this interactive is meant for students to go to. This might be a nice way that you might want to pin this, put it on your website, point people, uh, your students here when you go to the, to the computer lab and so forth if you're talking about innovation. And it asks you, what do we do first when we're, when we're starting to innovate? Well, first thing they do is they take care of safety. So it's asking me to drag and drop, make sure that, that we're prepared and ready to go. I think I missed my, uh, there we go, <laughs> missed the earphones. I was going to talk about dairy, ask me to explore a little bit what is calcium, what are probiotics, uh, proteins, and so forth, and then what are some of the ingredients that we have to use. So drag and drop the primary ingredients on the nutrition facts. So great way also talking about information literacy, right, nutrition, health information, what do we understand, what don't we understand, et cetera. What's a probiotic? It's a good bacteria. It helps support digestion. So I think you guys get the idea. Just another one of those uh, modules, those self-paced modules that you can utilize. However, let me scroll to the top now and show the virtual field trips area. Because we have one coming up. On Wednesday, May 6th, if you're interested, we would love to host you at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10, cent, uh, 10 Pacific. Uh, as we're really focused on a high school, journey to talk about entrepreneurship. So please, if you're a high school teacher, we encourage you to join us. 
And if you're elementary, elementary or middle, although you missed the live piece, there's some real fun stuff here, both in uh, our middle school, here's our grade six to eight, as well as our K-5 archives. So in K-5, we were at uh, one of the Chibani factories in New Berlin, New York, and then we were out in Idaho for our 6-8. And I'd like to show you just the first maybe minute so that you can understand a little bit about what we're talking about when we say virtual field trips, because oftentimes that means something to different people, but when we share, when we talk about joining a virtual field trip at Discovery Education, we're talking about more than just a self-paced tour. Virtual field trips to us are opportunities to interact live with the folks that we're working with, as well as students from all around the world. And in fact, that's one of my favorite parts about virtual field trips, that we go to Twitter and we use our, our questions box and our media player pages and so forth, so that we can host student questions from anywhere. And we ask those questions in real time and we're able to provide the answers uh, from the experts. And that's just to me one of the best things about technologies and 21st century learning, being able to connect students with careers, uh, and, and really prospects for what they might want to do in the future. So, take a minute here. I'm going to share a link with you. We're just, I'm just going to ask you to watch the first minute. And really, I mean, so on top of getting the, the experience, this is fun for you guys because you get to see me in a hairnet, and every time I see this, I kind of laugh at myself. But you know what? Safety first. So, uh, as I mentioned, I'm going to share this. Only watch to about one minute, one minute, 10 seconds, and then I'm going to pull you away from it just so you can get a little taste of a virtual field trip. Welcome to Idaho. We're here in Twin Falls to go behind the scenes at Giovanni's newest and largest yogurt producing facility. While we're here, we will explore a key ingredient needed to bring the Greek yogurt from the farm to the fridge. It's called innovation. Today, you will take a tour of the state-of-the-art facility to meet experts We're ready to take your questions. who are passionate about math and science and responsible for a variety of different departments, such as engineering, product development, and food science. Plus, you'll get a close-up look at how engineers incorporated innovative design technology when constructing the one million square foot plant. See how research and development teams create new flavors and understand why the new robotic no-touch packaging system is the way of the future. Greetings, my name is Kyle Schott with Discovery Education and welcome to Twin Falls, Idaho. We are here in the heart of the manufacturing plant that makes Chobani yogurt and I'm so lucky to be here with Hamdi Ulakaya. How are you today, Hamdi? I'm very good. I'm very excited, very happy to meet you and with so many people out there. Well, and you're an old pro now because many of the students watching may have joined us when we were in New Berlin back in May for our first virtual yes. field trip. So we're so excited to have you once again. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Share, if you will, a little bit about what your role is here at Giovanni. Well, Kyle, I, uh, I wear a lot of shoes, but I'm the founder and the CEO of Giovanni. But I like to call myself the master yogurt maker at Giovanni. Um, I started my journey seven years ago in a very small town in upstate New York in South Edmonton, where we were the last time. And I worked two years to make a perfect cup of yogurt, which is my mother's recipe. And the reason I did that is because I am from Turkey. Uh, you know, I grew up in a farm making yogurt and cheese with my family and I couldn't find a perfect cup of yogurt here that I love. So why don't I make for myself or everybody else? And that's how my journey started. And, and you, you make a lot of yogurt now, and a lot of different flavors. And that's what I'm so excited about today because today we're talking about the innovation of food science. And as the students will see, when you walk around this facility, it is just packed with innovations. Absolutely. From the designs of the cups to the designs and the way in which you manufacture the yogurt to, of course, the yogurt itself. Absolutely. New flavors coming out all the time. We, maybe we can get a few sneak peeks. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> we'll see at the end of the show. <laughs> but we were really talking about innovation. And so what we want you to know at home and in your classrooms and wherever you're watching is that you can ask us questions by going to the bottom of the website where you're viewing this. So scroll on down, submit your questions. To One us thing, where they, cannot, they cannot ask my secret. They can't ask your secret. Maybe one. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe they could ask and I'll ask and well, you never know. <laughs> so ask your questions and we'll be coming back to those as we get later into the program. 
All right, excited to pull you from that. I'm sure uh, you were just getting started, but I do want to make sure we get to a few things here before I have to go. Uh, so, again, take a look at these virtual fields. As you can see, we were live on the production floor. The reason for the noise in the background is because they were creating yogurt right there as, as, we, as we were chatting. Um, but these aren't just about um, yogurt, for example. As I mentioned, if you look through that archive, we actually did a hands-on STEM activity, which you can find on the Recipe for Innovation website, that asked students to create basically a boat. And that's what you see in a little screen capture there, and to test things like buoyancy and how long it can last and so forth. So uh, really, really fun stuff, and, and I hope you'll take a look at a few more of those things as we go. Now, I know uh, that you probably only have about five more minutes before we have to get going. So I'm going to go through just a few more slides here, just to whet your appetite, just to give you a little taste of what else is on the website and what else you might want to find. Um, first off, we mentioned that we have lots of resources that aren't just science-based or aren't just, help, uh, aren't just um, around technology. For example, Together Counts, this is a great portal that is uh, really created to help combat childhood obesity. It's to give students a way to talk about things like fitness and energy in and energy out in a very fun and reinforcing way. And with that, there are sweepstakes. Sorry, this is another one of those you missed out in February, but it'll be back again next year where you can win um, things like a full playground for your school. Pretty cool. And this one also has uh, Spanish resources included and so forth. But what I love, again, talking to you guys and talking with our, our Discovery Educator Network, so we're able to take these programs and really build fun uh, challenges and fun programs um, for you guys to, to be meaningful. And so if you kept an eye to the DEN blogs, you might have noticed we invited you right after the beginning of the year to join DEN Fit, which is a, a fun little DEN passion project by some of our community members to stay active, to stay in shape, and to really kind of track your steps. And the beauty of this challenge was that the Together Counts team joined with us and they provided nutrition scales. They're really kind of a neat Bluetooth wireless uh, syncing uh, nutrition scale where you can me measure your food. They provided those to almost every participant that wanted to join us on our Den Fit Challenge. And what was the challenge? It was to get 10,000 steps in a day for 21 days. So we do lots of community pro promotions around these programs. And again, blog.discoveryeducation.com is a great way to find uh, any community programs and promotions around these. Last, uh, pr probably one of the last partnerships I'll be able to share and talk about is our 3M Young Scientist Challenge. So we're going to give this video just a second to play for you um, because this, you still have an opportunity to join and, to, and really to have your students join it. I wanted to make sure that you were able to see it. Uh, this is every year giving your students the chance to, uh, if they're in fifth through eighth grade, to submit a video and to possibly be named America's top young scientist. And as you'll see here in this video, as I share this with you, we have students that go on to be on the Ellen Show and news channels and really to make some, some big things happen in the world. So very invigorating uh, challenge and, and a great way to be real world and, and practical for your students. So I'm going to share this in the chat window and go ahead and tell me with a green check when it's finished. And finally tonight, the 11-year-old inventor who stunned grown-ups with a blazing idea. I redesigned the sandbag, replacing the sand with pre-calculated amounts of superfluid, polymer, and salt. Ten middle school students are finalists in this year's Discovery Education 3M Young Scientist Challenge. At stake, $25,000. Well, they are only in middle school, but their inventions are so good, some have already been patented. I designed retractable training wheels, which you can adjust while you're actually riding. So, you want to be a partner? Y yes, I do. <laughs> Two of the finalists in the nation's most prestigious teen science competition, yeah. and they're here with their inventions that they hope will help change the world. My aim is to use the carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, where there's so much uh, car carbon dioxide pollution. My plan is to use carbon dioxide in my battery from the atmosphere. My project was reducing the amount of energy used by computers by creating a new cooling system. What happens is when sunlight strikes these beads, these high energy particles are created. Okay. And those particles can interact with the DNA inside bacteria and they can destroy organics which will purify the water. If it detects a certain level of force, so the capsule breaks and you see the red mark and so that's a signal to coaches 
the young scientist challenge it was about solving a real world problem mm -hmm. and I thought this would be a great thing to try to do. I'm so excited that Discovery Education and 3M have given middle schoolers across the country opportunities like these. Engineers say Peyton's invention is the real deal. He would be a fantastic student here at UN. I can't do this because I'm uh, I've got a conflict of interest. If you can buy stock in Peyton, <laughs> you should do so now. You are our best hope for the future, so we really appreciate that. You are doing important things, and we're all going to benefit from you. Thank you so much. You guys are fantastic, and Thank this you. is what America is all about. Thanks, guys. The rest of that, but you can see these kids are really inspiring, and, and well, frankly, we want to see what do your students have. We know you have bright students that can, can compete and can share their ideas on this level, so uh, you still have time. I, that's the main thing that I wanted to share with you guys, that there's still time to, to, to join in on this, the Young Scientist Challenge. You have until just almost, you know, just maybe over two weeks, April 21st. So if you don't know, go ahead and share that with your students, youngscientistchallenge.com, students grades five through eight. And frankly, they can win $25,000 scholarships, trips to places like Costa Rica. There's a lot of great stuff going on there. But even if you don't want to participate, Again, talking about websites and, and programs that work together and support uh, the three things you want to do in your classroom. 3M also partners with us on the science of everyday life. And this website is K-12 for teachers, students, and parents as well, providing videos, providing interactives, uh, virtual labs. So science classroom, there's a great one on windmills and wind energy in there. Uh, some, some really great stuff, and there's also a sweepstakes. Now remember, sweepstakes means you can enter once a day. All you have to do is enter your, pretty much your name and your email and click enter. Challenge, there's some work involved. So there's two things, two opportunities here. The challenge, fifth through eighth grade students submit a video, but you teachers, you can join right now. There's a sweepstakes going on on scienceofeverydaylife.com until the 30th. Okay, just a few more things before we wrap up here. So lesson plans, virtual labs, hands-on activities. We mentioned that. I'm going to scroll right through a few of these slides. Uh, Toyota Team Driver, we have some phenomenal student videos. We have a video challenge that goes with this program all about safe driving. We haven't talked too much about high school programs, but we did mention the innovation, uh, recipe for innovation, virtual field trip about entrepreneurship. That's in May. And then also starting on, uh, whew, I believe it's the 16th, just this week, this Thursday, maybe this Friday, you can vote for student videos that are your favorite. We have students that submit videos. If we had time, I would share this. But I will share the link with you, of course, in the chat window. Here's one example. Take a look at this one a little bit later on of a student that won this challenge and was able to create a video with a, with a Discovery film crew. And we have high school students that submit videos only up to about a one minute commercial about safe driving and what it means to them. So that's another great resource for you. Might get you, you interested in, especially if you're really supporting that content creation and digital media angle. Other programs to know about, well, Science of Everyday Life, uh, Siemens Science Day is another one that supports science in the classroom. This one's meant really for K to five teachers, hands-on activities, videos, and so much more. So again, I mentioned earlier, there's no way we could possibly get through all of this stuff, but we're going to scroll ahead because I want to make sure that you are aware of a few opportunities that you have to continue to learn with us over the next few months. Let's start here. Five ways to use Discovery Education. My friend Dean Cheresky and I are hosting this webinar series. You can find it by going to discoveryeducation.com slash events. And it's really a fun way to share ways to use digital media. Even if you don't have Discovery, we're sharing strategies and ways to use media in your classroom. And you can sign up for that on our event calendar. It looks like that image in the lower left-hand corner. The URL is right there. And we're also posting blogs that take you right to the resources, so things like Animoto and other tools that many of you probably know of, but many of our educators don't know of. Additionally, our Summer Institute, I believe I saw a question in there before. If you're a Discovery Educator, you have a, a subscription to Discovery Education, you can apply to our DEN Summer Institute, and it's a free week of learning. All you have to do is get yourself to the location, and this summer we will be hosting it in Washington, D.C. at American University. It's our 10th year of the, of the DEN, and so we're really celebrating and looking forward to it. We encourage you to, to join us. 
at the Summer Institute in Washington, D.C. for a week of learning this summer. And I know it's already on your radar, it's on your calendar. We've seen it on the Classroom 2.0 um, lineup, but our Spring VertCon is happening on the 25th. And so, yes, we wanted to know, share with you that because there's so many other ways that you can learn from educators just like yourselves. Just a few last things. Virtual field trips, we only touched the tip, just the, the, just the tip top of it. What else can you find if you're looking for virtual field trips? Well, just this, in the past couple months, we were at Ford's Theater discussing the 150th assassination of President Lincoln. We were, which is this year, by the way, uh, live down in Ford Theater, an amazing time. We've been out to the Discovery Channel telescope in, at Lowell Observatory. Uh, we did a Pi Day, Pi Day webcast. So you can find all of this because there's an archived events tab at discoveryeducation.com slash events. Other things and opportunities that we've been a part of, we mentioned Doodle for Google two years in a row, and our third we will have next fall, uh, our Doodle for Google virtual field trips to support that challenge, the Weather Channel, tying it to meteorology, going inside the Weather Channel studios, our egg board virtual field trips, oh, that's a uh, slide too, too soon rather. Uh, Shabani, we mentioned Alcoa, all about manufacturing. This is the one I was looking for, uh, taking students to egg farms. And in fact, speaking of taking students to farms, we have a virtual field trip coming up just this month. In fact, in just over a week on the 23rd from the from Live from the Farm, all about technology and soil science. You'll find that on our calendar as well. Lots of opportunities to interact. And frankly, if you want to know more about virtual field trips, I would encourage you to go to this link here because I was just, I had the good fortune to be on a panel at South by Southwest EDU where we were talking about virtual field trips. And you can listen in on our session where we had uh, Carrie Byron, one of the Mythbusters that moderated it. We had Leah uh, Ben Raphael here on the right hand side. She works for Google and talked about the ways that they've partnered with us and what they're doing for students. In the middle, Daisha Jones, many of you know her, a phenomenal educator out of North Carolina. She does amazing things with virtual field trips to just give some ideas on how to make this work in your school and your district. And again, that's me on the left. So uh, please, we, I encourage you, if you're interested in that piece, and that's why you're here today is because of virtual field trips, that was a whole hour panel just on that. I would encourage you to, to listen to that. You mentioned the events, but again, last chance, 23rd, Live from the Farm, Shabani, Recipe for Innovation. And an interesting thing uh, really for uh, older students, upper middle school, uh, definitely high school, around Auschwitz, the past is present. I know that just recently you had Dr. Corey Street on, uh, and she was sharing all of the, the USC resources there around the Holocaust. And so we, we partner with them, and we will be continuing, continuing to do so around that, uh, that effort. And of course, we ran out of time, but take a look at those spotlight on strategies. I love to feature strategies. AEIOU is one of my favorite ones. That's how I was going to wrap up, but we just don't have enough time. I wish these were two-hour sessions. What can I say? And apparently I like to talk. So <laughs> join us. Go to community.discoveryeducation.com if you have any more questions. I'd be happy to stick around and answer them. If you have to run for the day, I understand that too. But thank you so much for, for bearing with me, and I hope a few of these things have caught your interest. Thanks so much, Carl. I did capture a few questions. Um, how long has the cyber safety program been available? Is that new? Yeah, that one is fairly new. We just launched that last fall, November, mm -hmm. maybe December, November, December, somewhere around there. And even some of the content, like the curriculum modules, have been loading throughout the winter. So I believe they're all up now. Um, but mm -hmm. Yes, we hosted a Twitter chat. I believe if you search uh, Dig Your Kids chat, I believe that was the, uh, the chat back in, um, uh, I think maybe the end of February. But you can search that hashtag and learn more about, about that as well. And was that an Intel program? Yes, that's a, a partnership between Discovery and Intel Security. It's called mm -hmm. Think Before You Link. Great. Um, someone asked about the mass tech book, if you could tell us a little bit more about that. 
happy to do so, and I, I'll pro provide some links here too. Um, our math tech book is the latest of our offerings around um, really digital uh, digital based solutions that are that are really not a supplemental as often discovery streaming is thought of as a supplemental resource, but really a core resource that can be used um, you know every day in the classroom. And so all of our tech books come with professional development included. And really it's not just meant for a one to one or, or a school that has an environment uh, that is only technology based, but it's really you know one to one or one to many. Uh, any kind of an environment. So our tech book series, you can learn more about those. Here we go. I'll, I'll paste the link here so that you can find out. But we have science, social studies, and we just launched our math tech book uh, had a, in the beginning of January, and we're excited about that. We're really trying to look at ways to rethink learning and uh, making it interactive and engaging, of course, incorporating digital media uh, and interactives like we were sharing and so forth, but mapped out into a full full program for you to, to use throughout the full school year. Terrific. Those were the questions I captured, except one about the DEN workshops that I think was already answered in chat. Um, does anyone else have questions for Kyle? You can type them in chat, or we can use the mics. And I just want to thank so many of you for joining me today. I'm happy to continue the conversation. Perhaps I can answer some of your questions on Twitter later as well. Uh, but thank you for joining me today, for taking time out of your Saturday. I know you're all so busy, but I, I really do commend you for continuing to, to grow and uh, expand your professional learning. And well, I was honored to, to be invited. And thank you, Paula. I'm so glad to see that you were able to join us. And I hope you feel better. Uh, but to the Classroom 2.0 community, thank you so much. Again, thank you so much, Kyle. We'll go ahead and wrap up. I think I'm turning the mic over to Peggy for the upcoming event. Yes, thank you so much, Kyle. That was fantastic. And now we all have our appetites whetted for all of the amazing things that we can find on Discovery Ed. So thanks. Um, we have some great shows coming up. And I know a lot of you are looking forward to learning more about ThingLink. And we have a fantastic educator who will be sharing with us. She is my go-to person and guru for ThingLink. And that's Susan Oxnavad. And don't forget, we won't have a show on April 25th because we are all going to the free Dan Spring Virtual Conference. So be sure to check that out that day. Also May 2nd, Lisa Parisi is going to be our featured teacher, an amazing global educator that I know you're going to want to learn from. On May 9th, we're going to do a show featuring Google Chrome extensions. And Chris Giles from Arizona has a, a a great hands-on workshop for us. So come on your computers, because we're really going to be trying some things out in that webinar. And then on May 16th, we have an excellent student presenter. Sydney Sharon is an amazing ninth grader who was a keynote presenter in the Student Technology Conference. And she's going to be sharing all about making um, movies for your visual students. So we look forward to all of those and hope you'll come back to join us. Thanks, Peggy. The, the Learning Revolution is Steve Harkadon's latest endeavor. He's gathered together all of his PD resources in one place, including the Host Your Own webinar series. So you can sign up for a Blackboard Collaborate room, like where we meet each week for these sessions. And as long as you make your session public, you can hold your event for free. You can also nominate a featured teacher with the form at tinyurl.com slash cr20live featured teacher nominate without the E at the end. Uh, each month, we we try to have a featured teacher, and uh, you can also nominate yourself for that show. 
When you exit the session, the Classroom 2.0 Live survey should open up in your web browser. If it doesn't, you can take the link that will be in the chat log. There's also a tab in the Live Binder in that resources section. At the bottom of the survey, you will find two fields to request a professional development certificate. The name that you put in one of those fields is the name that actually gets printed on the certificate now. Uh, please include a personal email address rather than a school email address for this because schools tend to block uh, this from getting to you. So you might not get the certificate if you use your school address. The video collection and audio collection for Recordings are available at iTunes U, so there are other resources for the archives, including the RSS feed that you can get to on the Weebly website. Again, special thanks today to Kyle Schott, to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education, and the Learning Revolution, to Weebly.com for providing our website, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in today's show, thanks so much for coming.